Let's all stand and lift our hands in reverence to Yahweh. Our Father, which is in heaven, whose name is Yahweh, this is servant Kohen Levi Hawkins, coming before us, seated with Israel Hawkins, through the authority of a high priest, Yahshua Messiah, along with all the men who are gathered here for workshop, Father Yahweh, those who are here physically present and those who are looking at the class via the internet, we do thank you, Father Yahweh, for them and for all, all of us being the, uh, the body of Messiah, Father Yahweh. We do pray, Father, that you bless the, the workshop, everything that is said, that is brought forward, Father, and that you bless the teachers that will be teaching this evening. We pray that you continue to watch over your house, your work that is being done at this time, and that you continue to build your house, Father Yahweh, and that you bring it to completion, just as you have promised through the, through the prophets of all. We do thank you for the blessings this day, Father Yahweh, and we pray that we continue to rejoice in your presence forever. And these things we ask of you, Ask of you being in unity with the body of priests through the authority of a high priest, Yahshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, man. You may be seated. I'm sorry, you can be seated. Yahweh's peace be with each and every one of you. This afternoon, here we're going to be in the 18th book of Israel, chapter 5. We're going to be continuing on with this feast theme of unity. We're going to be rehearsing here just a few of the words, of course, time permitting, a few of the words here that Pastor brought us on 2.17.18, which was Donkeys 1. It was chapter 5 of the 18th book of Israel. He entitled the sermon, Get Ready to Drink This Cup with Yeshua. It Requires Humility. And in a couple of the key points here to recognize is that this humility that pastor's showing us in this sermon this is only something that's being taught by the house of Yahweh okay this is this is only something coming forth from Yahweh's witness he's different than all the other world who are promoting and teaching a different way now he starts off here in verse 1 shalom everyone praise Yahweh you can be seated Yahweh's peace be with each and every one of you and then going over here to verse 7 he says, what I want you to see is we're getting close to Yeshua's memorial. We really need to spend some time studying this and correcting ourselves and overcoming. Okay, so you can see that um, our focus, we have to get our focus on ourselves, on our own, you know, uh, overcoming and correcting ourselves, getting ourselves, examining ourselves continually, daily, day by day. Of course, we will be after this feast being drawing closer to Yeshua's memorial than we were before this feast, but it is a little bit away. But daily, we should be examining ourselves to see where we can uh, perfect ourselves to be in unity with the teachings of the great house of Yahweh. We need to get our minds off of the world totally, totally off of worldly things. Everything you think of now should be getting you ready for the feast. You don't have to go out and mix into the world to do this. It's all made available, and we've gone to extremes to make it available. You know, and the house of Yahweh supplies us with all our needs necessary to be ready for Yahweh's feast, to be ready for the coming of Yeshua, to get ourselves, our minds and our, and our bodies and our physical, get ourselves physically fit to be a part of this family. You know, it, it's not... Um, you don't have to, when we come to Yahweh's house, you know, Yahweh brings us here, you know, under, uh, you know, Yahweh brings us here under the conditions that we're in at the time, you know, and he doesn't bring us here so we can start, you know, um, now preparing for, you know, uh, well, man, I need to go, I need to go get me a, a great paying job so I can start buying this and I can start buying that and now, he doesn't bring us here to get distracted. He brings us here to get us focused on his way. You know, so how Yahweh brings us, you know, some he brings here that they're set off and some are, you know, uh, like the rest, you know, uh, struggling day by day to take care of their daily needs. But Yahweh supplies us everything that we need. And we have to make sure that we're focusing on why Yahweh brought us here to his house. Right. And we just read it here, studying and correcting ourselves and overcoming. Now, Pride, Pastor says here in verse 8, pride is the most difficult of all things in our lives. You know, of course, and this is uh, in Proverbs chapter 6, verses 16 through 19, where it talks about the six things Yahweh hates and the seven that are an abomination to him. You know, this proud look, you know, is something that's uh, so ingrained within mankind today. 
you know, from Cain all the way down to us, 6,000 years later. Pride is the most difficult of all things in our lives today, especially today, especially today. With the increase in knowledge came what? This increase in this teaching of, of being proud and arrogant and boastful and, you know, the freedom to do what you want to do. Especially today. He says, Martin Luther King Jr., he did a lot of damage in promoting the word proud. People didn't realize what he was doing. I don't think he did himself. People from that time period, all nationalities, have got it put in their minds that they need to be proud. You know, this is a, you know, the swing in 60s kind of started bringing this, this freedom movement and people thinking freely and doing what they want to do and uh, separating themselves from the norms that were at that time, you know, started really increasing this proud thinking. Stand up and be proud and be a proud people. Think of yourselves most highly. Okay, this is the teaching in this time period that came about, you know, uh, really started increasing from uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s days until what we see today. And, and quickly for your notes here in Jacob chapter 4 and verse 6, Jacob 4 verse 6, the apostle tells us, so much greater is the mercy of Yahweh. He gives that, so much greater is the mercy he gives. That is why he says, Yahweh resists the proud, but gives mercy to the humble. And then a cross-reference for that scripture you see there in um, footnote 2 is Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 34, where it says, Truly he, this is speaking of Yahweh, truly he, and if you look at the side note there, it says, He allows the mockers by their plagues, he allows them to be scorned, and to turn to their own destruction. But he gives honor to the lowly, to the humble. So we can see Yahweh exalts the humble. You know, those who take on his character. Because Yahweh, remember what pastors taught us, Yahweh is the greatest servant to all mankind. You know, to, to all creation. He's the greatest servant in this plan of his. And he's desiring us, his sons, to follow after the same character of, of serving others. Putting others' needs before our own. You know, not having this godlike mentality that we're going to cover here, continuing on in this sermon. That's kind of interesting. I was just thinking of recent news and different things in the news. And, um, you know, Pastor talking here about this being put in man's mind about being proud. Well, here recently they've been talking about a group of people called the Proud Boys. And I just quickly had looked up Wikipedia says the Proud Boys are a far-right, neo-fascist, and male-only organization affiliated with white supremacists that promotes and engages in political dissent. Now, so in people's mind, the only Proud Boys is this group, right? Well, thinking you think back a few years, I've just, I just heard about the Proud Boys, I think, here in the last several weeks. Possibly you've heard about them longer, but if you think throughout the last... 10, 20 years, you know, this pride is something that every, um, every group that promotes immorality and turning against righteousness, this is something they always say, you have to have gay pride and, you know, you have to be strong and proud and make your own choices to do what you want with your own body. You know, this is a mentality that comes forth, brought from Cain, you know, who followed this deception that Satan taught to Eve, you know, about you know, you're not going to die. You can be proud like the gods. You know, you'll be just like the gods. And Pastor continues on here in verse 9. He says, the motivational speakers, they do this. Zig Ziglar was one of them that promoted this proudness. And you're above everybody else in the world. That's God worship. Okay, promoting yourself above others is God worship. You're not above. You're a person. You're a created being. As Yahweh said, he created you. You know, so what are we really? You know, what are we really? Yahweh created us. What are we? You know, we're his creation. There's nothing to be proud of. We should be marveled at Yahweh's creation, not allow our minds to, to, to dwell on pride. But that carnal desire is always to get shifted and offset towards pride, arrogance, boasting yourselves up, being, being right, being right in the fight, you know, in the debate, in the argument, being the one who's right. You're not above. You're a person. You're a created being, as Yahweh said. He created you. That puts him above you. He's our father. He also has the most wisdom of any being in the universe. He has the wisdom that he offers to mankind. He offers it to us if, if, conditional, right? He offers it to us if we will humble ourselves as a little child. 
This is where I left off last week. Pastor says, Yeshua said, if you don't, okay, if you don't humble yourself as a little child, you certainly won't be a part of this kingdom that Yahweh has offered to mankind. That was in the beginning. Genesis 1.26. Pastor goes on here in uh, 18th book of Israel, chapter 5 and verse 10. He says, humility is what you want. Humility, being humble. Then he shows here the definition of humility. He says, it's a quality, a state of mind and heart of being humble to the work that Yahweh himself inspired his prophets to write about. He's been asked many times, or it's been asked, I apologize, it says, it's been asked many times, how do you know the Bible is not a fairy tale? Fairy tales can't foretell the future. In these prophets' writings, the future is foretold. Okay, so this, this is prophecy proves the scriptures correct. You know, and you can see what the prophets wrote and you can see exactly how things have come down thousands of years from when they wrote it to this last generation, this time where knowledge would increase. And we know, we know from prophecy that mankind will destroy themselves with these weapons that they, they made with their increase in knowledge. Like the nuclear bomb, Pastor says, that can darken the sun and destroy the earth was foretold to be in this generation. You know, how come it was just in this generation? Why didn't they figure this out? You know, they, they say there's many brilliant minds, you know, hundreds of years ago, and they, they had ideas of how to make planes and all these things. Well, how come, how come they didn't figure it out? Why didn't they make these things, you know, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago? Well, Yahweh prophesied it would be in this generation. It had to be in these last days. The nuclear bomb was foretold to be in this generation, not just a generation somewhere down the line. Even so, that would still be foretelling it, but Yahweh actually specifies the generation they would have it, this nuclear bomb that can darken the sun. That proves the prophecies true and trustworthy. In those same prophecies, those same prophets wrote about the promise. They showed why you are here. Oh, we didn't just... We didn't just uh, just occur to fall into this place, you know, we took the wrong exit 297 or 301 off of I-20 and, you know, just ended up here by accident. No, no, this prophesy why we would be here. The prophets show this promise. They show you why you're here. They show you why you were created. Why should we not believe after seeing the bombs that were prophesied in the days of Deuteronomy? And of course, you know, the unbelievers, they're actually going to have to see touch, feel, you know, like they always say, well, in order to believe, in order to believe what Yisrael Hawkins says, I'm going to have to see that with my own eyes. You know, their eyes are going to melt out of their sockets is what the prophets say. They'll melt out of their sockets. You know, be, if, if, if we turn and being foolish and disbelieving what Yahweh's prophets foretold and obeying the one Yahweh has sent, you know, that'd be the last thing you see is that great flash that's coming, you know, that's going to reach and burn this entire earth here, destroying their diseases, and their defiled inhabitants. In verse 12 here of chapter 5, 18th book of Israel, pastor says, Eob or Yeshub lived in the same time of the Levitical priesthood. Well, he was a product of it. He was held up by Yahweh to be one who actually qualified for receiving the promise. You know, last time I read the book of Eob or Yeshub, you know, he didn't have a, a walk in the park or a, you know, a rose bed. You know, I mean, he had he had a couple uh, difficulties that he had to get through, you know, before he could realize and, and actually be able to uh, see the blessings that come. You know, it was it was a tough road that he had it might be rocky soil if you were, you know, planting a garden. You know, it wasn't very easy to plow it up. He was held up by Yahweh to be one who actually qualified for receiving the promise. He qualified. He qualified how? By being proud, by lifting himself up. Above those around him? No, he qualified by keeping Yahweh's laws, statutes, and judgments. He qualified for this place in Yahweh's kingdom. He won't receive it without us. That was also foretold. You can see all these righteous men who are waiting waiting for you, men, waiting for us to qualify, to help bring them back, to continue this great plan, and to usher in this mighty kingdom that Yahweh prophesied of, that they saw. They saw it in prophecy, but they... You know, it wasn't their time period. It wasn't their generation. They weren't born in the last generation. They had a rest, and now they're waiting the great resurrection. In verse 13, 
Pastor says, Yahweh foretold the earth being in this mess. You see what the political leaders are saying? And, and if you don't see what the political leaders are saying, you haven't opened a newspaper or turned on the news in quite some time, right? Because that seems like that's all that is, is on the news is about what the political leaders are saying. You see what the political leaders are saying, Pastor says? They can't do anything. There's nothing they can do to stop it. There's nothing on their agendas to stop this. There's nothing that will stop the wars. They have no answers to any of it. Okay? And, and I, was, I was trying to look in between the lines here in verse 13. And, you know, of course, I had a printed sheet, so I thought there was a typo. But I, I went to the book, too. You know, when you look in between the lines here, it says the same thing. That these political leaders, they can't stop it. He says they can't do anything. Okay, he didn't say, you know, well, the red states or the blue states or the liberals or the independents or the Republicans or the conservatives or the Democrats or, you know, the socialists or the communists. No, he says the political leaders, these leaders of the kings of the earth, these that are going the way of the woman that sits on seven hills who is guiding and directing them, they can't solve their problems. You know, and this is real important, men, for us to really Remember and pay attention because I, I believe that this time period we have real strong delusions and propaganda. You know, and Pastor told us many, many moons ago, you know, long, long time ago, it might have been decades, you know, that who controls the news and who controls what you see in front of your face? You know, well, no, I saw something independently on YouTube. You know, YouTube's not independent. Come on now, people. You know, these things are all controlled and they're promoted from the city that sits on seven hills, you know, and what's, what's Satan desire? What is their desire? To destroy mankind, you know, so of course she wants you to hate your neighbor because he believes this or he believes that, but you never, at least I haven't been able to find anyone saying, you know, we need to follow the house of Yahweh and Yisrael Hawkins. You don't see that on the mainstream news or the back channel news or any kind of news except uh, uh, YPN News. That's the only, only news source I've ever seen that tell, says we need to start following Usual Hawkins and the House of Yahweh. Okay, And that's because these political leaders, no matter what side of the aisle they're on, no matter which country they're in, they have no answers to any of it. The man on the news got really blatant about it when he was telling how bad it is, and he used a four-letter word in doing so. They have no answers. That's exactly what the prophets of Yahweh foretold they would have in this time period, no answers, you know, and if, if you just do a little research, you know, just on our country, let's say, you do a little research, and they even have documentaries that are, you know, uh, enjoyable to watch, as it were, but you could also read it in a book, you know, or read it in an article, go back and read the Mark of the Beast, volume one, that's where you can see the real history of it, but you do a little research about our country, you can see every time They've tried to make something better. It only gets worse and worse and worse. And it divides the people more and more and more. They have no answers. That's exactly what the prophets of Yahweh foretold. They would have in this time period no answers. They'd have bombs that could destroy and burn the earth, darken the sun and burn the earth. That was prophesied thousands of years ago. You know, America's young country. Very young country, 200 and something years old. Not very old. 1776, not that long ago. Thousands and thousands of years ago, Yahweh prophesied that this land would be established for one purpose, for the house of Yahweh to be established. You know, and if you kind of look, if you kind of, they always, they even uh, poor confessed coronavirus positive people, you know, they're on the news constantly saying, you know, our forefathers would be rolling in their graves if they see what this country's come to. Well, they, they obviously didn't understand the prophecy of why this country would even be. Sure, it's turning from what it was originally, but it was originally set up for the work of Yahweh to be set up, to be established, to be able to bring this message to this dying world. No person, Pastor continues here in the last part of verse 13, no person can look into the future and see that. That proves you can trust the prophecies. Okay? Verse 14, Pastor gets pretty bold here, but we need, we need, this, we need this boldness, men, to, to instill some backbone within us so we're not sissified by this Catholic church and these fluttering words. You're a fool, Yeshua said, if you don't believe every word that Yahweh's prophets have spoken. You don't live, he said, except by every word that Yahweh's prophets have spoken. I know a lot of people get angry with me for bringing this out. I know I'm different, Pastor says. Then he goes on in the middle of verse 15, he says, 
If I don't, if I see you going wrong and I don't correct you, it's my fault. If I do correct you and you want to continue to go the path of burning, that's your choice. And then in closing here in verse 18, he says, Yeshua, he's the one who's telling you this. And I want to show you that he lived exactly as he's teaching us that we've got to live. You know, so pastor correcting us is Yeshua correcting us. Our great high priest is leading and inspiring Yahweh's choicest branch, Yisrael Hawkins, to, to guide, direct, to correct us, to make us into this image where we would be able to become the sons of Yahweh. Yahweh bless you, men. That's all the time I have at this time. If you'll please stand. I have the opportunity to turn over to the great priest, the great Khan, Kohilath Hawkins. Shalom, men. Please be seated. Um, we're going to continue here in the um, chapter 5 here. And the title, again, I want to read the title. It's Get Ready to Drink This Cup with Yahshua. It Requires Humility. So what's the opposite of humility? Pride, right? <laughs> and pride, with pride, there's rebellion. There's the things that will keep us from acquiring the information that's necessary to be a part of Yahweh's family. And so to drink this cup with Yahshua, it requires humility. Okay, there's no other way around that. We have to humble ourselves to receive this information from Yahweh's house. So thinking about this cup, okay, thinking about this cup here, I want to read a couple of scriptures as we continue to, to learn what it takes to partake in this cup with Yahshua. So in your, um, in your BOI, Books of Yahweh, on page 751, this is Matithia, Matithia chapter 23. And I want to start with verse, verse 23. It says, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you pay tithes, and, tithes on mint, anise, and cumin, and have neglected the more, important, the more important matters of the law, judgment, mercy, and faith. Tithing you ought to have done without leaving the other undone. You blind guides who strain at a gnat, then swallow a camel. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you cleanse the outside of the cup and plate, but inside they are full of extortions, unlawful compulsions, blackmail, and incontinence, greed, unrestrained lack of content, contentment. So then uh, Yeshua says, Cleanse the inside of the cup and plate so that the outside can be clean also. Okay, so when we're dealing with this, uh, this cup here, there's an aspect, there's a, a level of understanding we have to have. Because if we want to partake with Yeshua, that means we have to do the same things that he did, right? And so these things that Yeshua was speaking against, he said, look, clean the inside of your cups and plate. Clean the inside of the container. Clean yourselves up because what, what's inside of you it's not in unity with Yahweh. It's not in unity with what the house of Yahweh is teaching, right? So we need to fix that. And so if we're going to drink this cup with Yahshua, that means we have to partake in the same things that made Yahshua the man that he is, right? We have, to, we have to be the example that Yahshua was. One more scripture, not was, but is, in the example that he said when he was walking on earth. So one more example I want to read in uh, Yeremia about a, about a cup here. Okay, about a cup. And then we're going to start in verse 20. Let's see. This is Jeremia chapter 51. Starting verse 6 here. It says, Flee from the midst of Babylon. Everyone save his life. Do not be cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahweh's judgment. He will repay her. Babylon was a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made the, let's see. That made all the earth drunk. The nations drunk of her wine. Therefore, they have gone mad. Okay. And so if you look up that word mad, it'll show you the various character traits, the various uh, actions that mankind did because they partook in the teachings of Babylon. Right. And so if we partake in that cup, then we have no part with Yahweh. Okay. And this is what Yeshua is saying. Because uh, remember the sons of uh, Zabia? Remember what their mother asked Yeshua? Who remembers what, what their mother asked Yeshua? Right, if, if, uh, if her sons could sit at the right hand and the left hand of Yeshua. And you remember what he said? He said, can they drink of this cup that I'm drinking from? And then he said, you will indeed drink from this cup and you will be baptized with the bapti baptism that I'm baptized with. Right, but then he said, but to sit at my right and left hand is not up to him, it's up to Yahweh. 
right? Those offices haven't been, you know, given out yet, right? But he said, you will indeed drink from this cup. We will indeed partake in these teachings from Yahweh's house to the point where we will be a part of this family. And this is what Yeshua said, you will indeed drink from this cup, right? But it's our choice. But it takes humility to choose to drink from that cup. We cannot resist the teachings from the house of Yahweh. When, when the priest comes to us and says, look, this is what the house is teaching. This is what you need to do. Then we need to correct our behavior. There's no need to try to stand up for ourselves. That's rebellion. That's pride. That's not being humble. Okay, it's not being humble. So here we're going to talk about Yeshua as a young man, right? As a young man, he was taught Yahweh's way to the point by the time he was 12 years old, he amazed the doctors, the lawyers, the, the ones who were like supposedly well trained in Yahweh's law at a young age. Right. And that came from his parents teachings that came from his daily studying of the scriptures and asking questions and that desire to be like Yahweh. A lot of us are behind the game because we, we weren't born here. We came here later on in life. Right. So we weren't raised like Yeshua. Does that mean it's too late for us? Not at all. This is all part of Yahweh's plan, showing what he can do in a short amount of time. Right. With a short amount of time. But it takes humility, you know, to, to listen and then to build that desire to be like Yahweh. And this is how we help our children. So as we're, re as we're reading this, let's think about how we need to be helping our children. It says here, verse 20, this book shows Yeshua's life here. Luke 2, 41. Now, every year his parents went to Jerusalem to the feast of the Passover. Every year. That's what Yahweh said that the last day's work is going to be teaching too. I'll show you that if we get to that scripture in my lessons here today on getting ready for Yahshua. Okay, getting ready for Yahshua. Now, every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Every year. That, meant, that means they were keeping the law that says, this moon will be the beginning of moons to you. That first moon is what sets your feast days. That's what's going to set our feast days. If we don't see the green ears before the next new moon, we will simply postpone the feast until the moon after we see the green ears. That's a fact. If we had the feast any other time, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't be Yahweh's way. You do have to watch for the new moon as Isaiah 66 shows. I just quoted it a while ago as the new heaven and the new earth will stand before me. So will these feast days and Sabbath days from one new moon to another and from one feast day to another one Sabbath to another, all flesh that is left alive is going to appear before Yahweh. So where are they going to go? To Rome? <laughs> no, they're going to be coming to Yahweh's house, right? And we're training to be here to show them everything that we're learning right now, right? So what can they expect when they get here? To hear, what, 1,200 different interpretations of what's being taught? Not at all right? They're not going to hear 1,200 different interpretations. They're going to hear the same message from every single person, right? We're going to be teaching the same thing. That's what's necessary to bring forth salvation. That's what's necessary to show people how to live appropriately, right? We can't teach anything different than what we're learning or death is going to enter in. That's how important it is to be humble, okay? And if we defend ourselves when the priests come to us and say, no, what I'm doing is right, then that's just showing Yahweh that we're willing to allow death to enter in if we're not going to allow the priest correct us. Okay, is that serious, man? So no matter what it is, if a priest correct us, we have to accept that correction. Okay, and if we don't understand, then we need to beg for understanding. We need to ask. We need to, okay, can you help me? Help me understand this. Okay, now that doesn't mean to do what you want to do until you understand. Okay, it means do what you're told to do. And then grow in understanding. Then you'll praise Yahweh. I'm, I'm glad I listened. Praise Yahweh. Right? Obedience first and then what? Then understanding. Right? Then understanding. When you came to the house of Yahweh, did you understand everything concerning what pastor was teaching? Or did you grow as the house of Yahweh was growing? You came here and you started growing. Right? What if you came here and just said, you know what? Ah, I don't understand the Sabbath, so I'm, I'm just going to stay at home until I understand that this is the Sabbath day. Then I'll keep the Sabbath. You know, what if we looked at, well... Well, I see the feast in the scriptures, but I don't know why I need to keep the feast. So I'm not going to come to the feast until I understand the feast days. You know, you see how that can be detrimental if you don't act until you understand. We have to be obedient to Father Yahweh. Continuing on here, verse, this is 23. Verse 42. Once when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem 
for the feast as usual. Yeshua is who this is speaking of. He was 12 years old. You got that? He was 12 years old. And when the feast days were over, when they ended, they left, but the boy remained behind in Jerusalem. However, Yosef and his mother did not know of it. But they thinking that he was in the traveling company when a day's journey, then they searched for him among their relatives and friends. But when they didn't, but when they did not find him, they turned back to Jerusalem seeking him. Finally, after three days, after three days, get that? They searched for three days. And this is very important that you understand. And probably knowing mothers, it was a frantic and sleepless searching. Okay. If you ever like couldn't find your child for a day or two or three days, even you already know how that could feel. Okay. You already know how that would feel. So he's trying to get that in your mind. They were searching for Yeshua. You've got to get that in your mind or you won't even understand what he's trying to show you here. They searched frantically for him for three whole days. Finally, after three days, they found him in the sacred precincts, sitting in the midst of the doctors playing Super Nintendo. I don't think that's what that says there. Let's see. No, no, no. He was asking questions. Okay. I'm sorry. I misread that. So he wasn't playing video games or doing any worldly things, but he was, he was talking to the doctors. Okay. They were the teachers of the law as shown in other places, both listening to them and asking questions. So you see what Yeshua's mind was on? Okay. They couldn't find him for three days, but he was learning. He was, he was studying at the feet of, of the teachers, right? Trying to, trying to get more understanding of the way of Yahweh. His mind was totally on the word of Yahweh, nothing else but that. And so we're going to read on here because this is real important here. It says, when they saw him, the parents, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, son, why have you done this to us? Behold, your father and I have searched for you in great distress. You see that? Great distress. You would be that way too. If you were, if it were your child. And he said to them, why is it that you search for me? Did you get that question here? Why didn't you know, mother and father? Why didn't you know where I was? Why didn't you know that I would be here studying? Why didn't you know I would be here training to fulfill my duties as a man of Yahweh? Why didn't you know that, mom? You didn't have to search all over looking. You should have came straight here. You know me, right? And this is what he's saying here. Okay, do you get that question? It says, you raised me. You taught me. You know my job. Where else would I be except in the sacred precincts learning? You see that? That was what Yeshua's mind was on. Yes, he thought his parents would know. His mind wasn't on the world. It was on learning to do this business of Yahweh. Business, yes, that's what it's called, a work. I don't think he was sarcastic, but I know he was pointing something out. Do you not know? Do you not, do you not yet know after 12 years that I must be about my father's business? I'm 12 years old. He's saying to you, excuse me. <laughs> he's saying to you who want to be like him, be about your father's work. He was saying to his mother and daddy here, you should have known where I was. This is where I come and study every feast in the sacred precincts. Why would I be playing around? My job is to learn about and be able to, per to perform my father's business. You see, all the things that probably went on between them, maybe they did, maybe it was just condensed. It's certainly there for you to see that Yeshua was sincere about his father's business. That's what he trained for every time he went to Jerusalem and got the opportunity to go before the priest and ask them questions and also answer questions for them. <laughs> you see that? He was asking the priest questions and answering questions. That is amazing. 12 years old, everyone was amazed by this young man's understanding of the way of Yahweh, right? Understanding, his understanding, because why? He was focused on the business of Yahweh, the family business of saving lives. OK, the family business of saving lives. There's no other way that people's lives are going to be saved outside of being taught Yahweh's way. The house of Yahweh is in desperate need of teachers 
but yet we play around. We play around, right? And Yahshua, at 12 years old, should have us feeling pretty embarrassed about ourselves, right? Because we still play around. We still do foolish things, but it's not too late for us, right? And the great example is in the, the, the high priest, our high priest and savior, Yeshua, okay? Even at 12, and I, I, I'm keep emphasizing that because it's important to see how diligent, how remarkable, you know, we can become if we had teachers, right? Do you know how remarkable the children would be, you know, if there was just like diligent teachers all the time? And I'm not saying they're not. Don't, don't misunderstand me when I say that. I'm talking about when everything is set up Yahweh's way, you know, how Yeshua's parents, they, their lives were set up in a way that they can focus on their son and raising him to be like Yahweh without the, the distractions that we have in these last days, right? And this is all part of Yahweh's plan. We can look to Yahshua and we can see, you know, what can become of not just us and our children, but everyone with teaching, with guidance. And Yahweh set up his plan so that we can be those teachers, so that through our efforts in these last days, through our ability and our desire to teach Everyone can be like Yeshua. That's an honor that I don't think a lot of people really pay attention to. You know, we can be the ones responsible for creating Yeshua's throughout all of eternity. That's the honor that one of the things that Yahweh has placed on us. Okay, being able to produce young Yeshua's over and over and over again. But it takes humility to do that. Okay, so if we're resisting the correction when it comes to us, okay, there's no way we can bring forth a Yeshua. We're not even acting like Yeshua. Okay, is that important? Okay, so let's continue on here. It says, let me go up here a little bit. So he, he went back to them. With, uh, he went back with them and came to Nazareth and was subject. Okay, did you get that? Wow. A 12-year-old boy who was subject. You know what that means? He was obedient. The scriptures say, rather, one of the Ten Commandments says, honor your father and your mother. This is one way you honor your father and mother unless you want, unless they want you to go to God worship. If they want you to go to God worship, the best way to honor them is to tell them, this is God worship, mother. I don't want any part of it. These people did not teach God worship. They taught Yahweh worship. They were keeping the feast like Yahweh told them to, told them to do according to the new moon of green ears. We're going to skip down to verse 52 here, and it says, And Yeshua increased in wisdom, in age, and in honor with Yahweh and man. And that is, that is a lot of information from three verses. If you just read these and see that Yeshua is going to put us to the test. Okay, let me read that again. If you just read these and see that Yeshua is going to put us to the test, we don't want to eat and drink of a bunch of damnation to our souls. Why do you hang on to that bitterness and hatred? Why are you angry, Cain? Hang on to those and you will burn. Okay, hang on to those and you will burn. Get them out of yourself. Start thinking about getting them out of yourself. Start thinking about getting the campgrounds ready and the food ready for feast. Get your own self ready because we're going to be using you in teaching. You get that? You'll be teaching. You will be teaching to get the sanctuary ready and getting the people prepared to drink of this cup of Yeshua. This cup of Yeshua is easy. All you've got to do is humble yourself like a child, go to the place Yahweh says to go, where he placed, uh, where he placed his name in prophecy. The same prophets who said the nuclear bomb was going to be here in this generation told you where Yahweh's house was going to be, how, would it, how it would be established, and the teachers who would be there to teach. Yeshua is one teaching us. Yeshua who wants you to drink this cup with him. If you don't drink it, you're going, you're gone anyway. If you do drink it, but you don't get rid of the evil stuff from you right now. And if this is the deciding feast, you're gone. You better work on it. It's urgent, very urgent. And so again, you know, we read at the beginning here, um, what's in that cup? The cups that's offered. Right. So you can be um, idolatrous, uh, the different uh, performing different abominations, have like the uh, the covetousness, all of those things in us. Or we can get rid of those things and be just like Yeshua, you know, learning the way of Yahweh, ready to teach, ready to help people make better choices in their lives. But again, what's the key requirement to drink of the cup of Yeshua? Humility. Man, Yahweh bless your understanding. 
If you'll all please stand and turn over to the great priest for closing prayer. Let's raise our Let's raise our hands to Father Yahweh. Oh, great heavenly Father Yahweh, this is your servant, David Yasef Levi Hawkins, seed of your servant, Israel Hawkins, and in unity with the body of priests in your great house, I come before you in the, honor, the most honorable name of Yeshua Messiah, who is high priest, leader, teacher, and judge over your house at this time. Father Yahweh, we thank you for these classes. They do add the joy that you talk about Father Yahweh, the joy in seeing the unity come together, bring us together as one, and become the jewel, Father Yahweh. And hopefully the, 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 the world will see and come to know us by the ahab that we have for each other. We know this will be fulfilled. We ask you, we ask you Father Yahweh, to just put it in our minds to seek and to hunt and this, this righteousness, Father Yahweh, that you are uh, opening up to us so that we can be your complete, your exact likeness. That's the plan. That was the plan from before mankind was created. So we thank you, Father Yahweh. Thank you for the feast. And we just ask you to protect us and guide your people, Father Yahweh, throughout this feast so that nothing, no accidents, no anything to disturb or or hurt. Uh, so we ask you, Father Yahweh, your guidance and your blessings in everything that we do in the name and by the authority of your Son, Yeshua Messiah. Hallelujah. Praise Yahweh. <laughs>